Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Genetics Junkie. Today in the video we're going to be dealing with sex influence traits and I have a really cool past paper question to do with you guys. I thought that would be the best way to to be able to learn how to do sex influence traits. So if you are comfortable with this then you know this is not the video with, for you but if you would like to do a past test question then then go for it. All right so I have put the question in the comments below so you can pause the video now and give it a read. All right, so hopefully you've done that and you've acquainted yourself. But before we get started, I just want to give a little bit of background information about sex influence traits. So firstly, these particular alleles that are found in both males and females um, cause the expression of a particular phenotype. But it depends on the hormone constitution of the individual, whether that phenotype is expressed or not. So pretty much um, this only affects really the heterozygotes of males and females and the homozygotes are not really affected in this. And I'm going to show you how that works. So also a lot of people have been messaging me and they say, how do you sift through this information and know immediately that this was a sex influenced trait? And I'm just going to give you tips on those two clues. Uh, firstly, they say in sheep. And I immediately knew when they said in sheep, this is possibly going to be a sex influenced trait. Um, because the most common examples of sex influenced traits is sheep horns and male pattern baldness. And just to talk about that is like, you females can still be bald but it's more likely in males because of their hormone constitution. So yeah, just moving on from that. So if you ever see something about sheep or male pattern baldness, you know it's sex influenced. Another thing to note is that sex influenced traits do not involve, involve your X and Y chromosomes at all. They are autosomal genes on autosomal chromosomes. Um, so that's where a lot of people get confused. Okay, so also the other tip that they give me is that they say that um, the horned large H is dominant over hornless small H in males, but recessive in females. So they've already given me a kind of clue that they say that an allele in one sex is different to an allele in another sex. And then I was like, okay, then we're definitely dealing with sex influence traits. So that's how I knew what this question was about. Okay, so then they're pretty much asking for your F1 and F2 offspring. So that's easy, we're going to be doing simple crosses here. Um, yeah, so just to get started, they talk about, hopefully everyone can see, let me just check, I did move it. So we have fleece, is our first trait. And I pretty much can see that that is going to be a normal autosomal um, trait that we're dealing with. So large W causes white fleece, and small W causes black fleece. Alright, so that's our first trait. Other trait, now here comes the tricky part. This is our horns in the sheep. This is the thing that is a sex influenced um, gene. So they say males, uh, sorry males, the large H pretty much causes horns, right? And um, in heterozygotes, that would stand true as well, because the, the dominant large H still is dominant in, in males. So we take it that if a large H is present in males, they will still have horns. But if they have two small H's, then they will be hornless. So great, we've got that down. Okay, so in I in females, they say that the large H is recessive. So now you could be thinking, okay, well, like, why is the large H, how can it be recessive in females because it's a large H? Well, it just means that the smaller H in females pretty much masks the large H. So wherever we see, so this is in particularly in the, in the, um, in the females, if a large H, in heterozygotes, if the large H is present with, with a small H, then they will be hornless. So if we have two, a homozygous large H, large H female, they will have horns. 
but in heterozygotes, because it has a small H with it, it will be hornless. And then you have to have two small H's, then that will also, oh sorry, I messed up, missed up the N over there. It's hornless there. It's so actually the hornless. There we go. So that's, this will stand for all sex influence traits. So if you have a sex influence trait, trait my, my um, advice to you would just be to write this down because it doesn't change for any of the questions. So if I just actually just highlight it. I just want to show you. So if I look at the males and females, in this case, two out of the three will have horns, and in females, one out of the three will will have horns. So heterozygotes in males are always, always have horns, but heterozygotes in females are hornless. And just to go back is that you can see that I'm using normal autosomal symbols because they are not X-linked. They are still autosomal genes. All right, so moving on with the question, they say that you must, let me read it. All right, so they say, if a homozygous horned white ram is bred to a homozygous horned black ewe, for those of you that where, where English is not your first language, then a ram is obviously a male sheep and a ewe is a female sheep. Okay, sorry, not being condescending, guys. There's just not everyone. It's not English is not everyone's first language. Okay, so that's pretty easy to do. So they say, yeah. So here is my first cross. I'm just gonna write P1 there. My first cross. And remember, they said that they're homozygous, so. Both of the, the genes that I'm dealing with have to be the same. Cool. I'm just going to put the sex symbols here as well. Yeah, that sounds funny, sex symbols. Just so we know what we're dealing with. Um, I do suggest that you guys, if you guys don't know which one's which, I think you should learn it because sometimes in tests they only give you the symbols. And then if you don't know which one's which, you can really make a mistake. Okay, so we're going to do a simple cross and we're going to get our F1. I'm not going to write out the cross because you can see what all your F1 are going to be. So we got heterozygotes for both genes. So a lot of people ask me, I'm like, okay, but now we don't have um, gender symbols here. We don't have our X and Y chromosomes. So how do we know which one's female and which one's male? So in questions like these, they don't expect you to know actual progeny numbers. What they expect you to know is just like if all the, the offspring were females, what are they going to look like? And if all the progeny were males, what are they going to look like? So if all of these were um, females, then we'd end up having a white hornless female. Because I checked that big W, little w gives you white, and a heterozygote female makes them hornless. But if it's a male, then we would have white, all of them would be white and they would have horns because a heterozygote it has horns. So that's how we worked it, worked it out. And now they still want your, we have our, F, our F1, you can write down what their, what their phenotypes look like, I think that's what they want. Yeah, they do want the phenotypes, but I'm not going to write it down. But now they still want your F2. So we're just going to take a male and a female F1 and, and cross them to get our F2. They don't say that in the question, so you have to kind of make that assumption yourself that in the offspring there would be males and females. All right, so I have saved us the trouble. Ta-da! And I did that cross, because I thought I don't want you guys sitting here for so long. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna highlight um, the males and the females to be able to write out their phenotypes. So the thing is, everyone gets confused here, is they're like, again, you don't know out of this Punnett square which are males and which are females. So what you end up having to do is you have to look at this in a hole and say, okay, all of these were males what were their phenotypes be and then once you've done that then you look at it again and you think okay well for all of these what are the phenotypes if they are all female so I'm just gonna first like highlight all the the males okay so all of these pretty much look the same So they're going to be white and they're going to have horns. 
then these ones are going to be the same. They're going to be white and they're going to be hornless. Then all of these are going to be the same. And they're going to be, what are they going to be? They're going to be black and they're going to have horns. And then the last one is going to be black and be hornless as well. And that's just for the males. So I'm going to put all these colors aside because now I want to do the females. So for the females, and I'm missing another color, damn it. Okay, anyways, for the females, I'm just going to put dots next to them so that I can, I can work out which one's males and which one's females. So all of these... Are going to be what are they going to be they're going to be white and they're going to be hornless just bear with me while I'm doing this sorry why did I highlight that one that one's not right no it is okay yeah they're going to be white and they're going to be hornless yeah well, let me just check yeah that looks pretty good and these ones are going to be black and hornless And then these ones are going to be white and have horns. And this last one, I'm just not going to color because now I have run out of highlighters. Actually, no, I think I've got another one. Sorry. And then this one is going to be the one that is going to be um, black and have horns. So now that I've got all my progeny set up, I'm just going to write out my phenotypes. Right, so for the males, this is my male category, I know that there's going to be 9 out of 16 white and horned, and then I'm going to have 3 out of 16 white and hornless, 3 out of 16 black and horned, and 1 out of 16 black and hornless. Now I'm done with the males, now I'm going to look at my dots and count them up, and I see that I have 3 out of 16 white and horned, I'm going to have 9 out of 16 white and hornless, 1 out of 16 black and horned, and 3 out of 16 black and hornless. So as you guys can see, I had to look at my progeny separately. I didn't have any X and Y chromosomes to tell me what sex they were. So it's all based on if you all lump it together and you think, okay, if all my progeny were males, what are my ratios going to be? If all my progeny are females, what are my ratios going to be? So yeah, that's how you do sex influence traits. Um, I hope the question makes sense to you and that you can see this, that only heterozygotes are really affected in sex influence traits. And just to reiterate, we were working with two different um, genes. So they just make that a little bit harder as if we were working with one. And um, yeah, write this down as a little cheat sheet for you in a test because it really doesn't change. They may change it to baldness, and then all you have to do is write the same thing. Males will still follow this pattern. Females will still follow this pattern, but the symbols will change. Um, yeah, and just don't get confused when you're using your F1, because your F1 might all be the same, but there are still males and females in your F1. But they just don't show it. You have to, you have to um, work it out for yourself. So yeah, I hope that was helpful, and look out for my next video. Cheers, guys.